This episode of Dean Attempts to Learn is brought to you by Sheet Happens, where you can purchase the guitar and bass tablature books that have been edited and approved by the musicians themselves. Actually, we've done one. We, uh, my band did one. It was great. Turned out awesome. Get your official tab books in both digital and physical formats, and all physical books come with a digital download that includes guitar profiles. If you're a fan of learning some awesome music like I am, head over to their website at sheethappenspublishing.com, and for my viewers, enter code word DEAN at checkout for 15% off your purchase. That's code word DEAN at checkout for 15% off. Hey! What is up? Welcome back to another episode of Dean Attempts to Learn. Uh, today I'm going to be working on some Protest the Hero. This is a band that I've liked for a long time. Uh, I, I got into their stuff when I was in high school. And uh, and yeah, they've got some pretty uh, cool stuff. Uh, I'm checking out a song called Underbite from Volition, I think. So, uh, so I'm working off the official uh, Sheet Happens tab, so that's cool. Um... I'm going to be spending some time on like this weird tapping part. I'm going to actually link in the description. There's a, uh, there's a video of them demonstrating how to play it. So uh, hopefully I can play it similarly. It's kind of a cool uh, up and down kind of arpeggio thing. And, uh, and I noticed it sounded kind of sweet. And so I don't do a lot of tapping stuff on here, I don't think. So I think it's mostly a tapping thing. So anyway, how are you doing? What's new? Um, hope everybody liked my last video, the revocation video. I love those guys. Uh, I did get to go see them and not that I haven't seen them like a million times before, but I love those guys. So that was cool hanging out with them once again after seeing them like 60 times or whatever. <laughs> when you tour with somebody, you see them a lot. So, uh, but yeah, great, great musicians, great tour package. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And so we're going to be heading on a tour in about a month and a half. I'm going to go through Europe. Uh, I'll put all the dates in the description below. Please come and hang out if you're in Europe or traveling abroad or, or whatever. All right. Uh, so. Man, my guitar tone sounds really crispy. Do you like a crispy guitar tone? I think I do. Not too crispy, but like a little bit crispy. I don't know. I haven't really warmed up yet today. Some videos I do beforehand, but this one I have not. We were working on some stuff yesterday that was uh, challenging, some new music that we're writing, and uh, I find it very challenging, very fast, so uh, it's sort of like after like a workout, I find that my uh, my fingers, my hands actually hurt. Mo mostly my left hand. Uh, I'm playing a, an instrument that has an extended scale uh, neck, so the space between the frets is a little bit bigger. It's an inch and a half across the entire neck length, so than than like a regular six string guitar. And I have these tiny little hands. So these little hands, these little pathetic little things. So they hurt. They hurt. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna play through the tab real quick. Uh, just take a listen to what we're dealing with. That's cool. That's like a nice little thing. It's got some cool chord changes in there. It's not, uh, it, it is pretty repetitive in the way that they have one kind of part that's repeating over top of a chord change in the background and then they change it up a little bit. Um, and, and I like that. I think that's cool. Uh, it gives the listener sort of like an ability to kind of hold on to something. Uh, oftentimes a guitar player will get so stoked on a concept or a technique or an idea um, and, and they'll keep changing it and they'll be like, oh yeah, people are going to, but, but it's not enough for somebody to grab onto when you're playing something. Oh yeah. Somebody's really going to like this. It's, it's this crazy part, but the crazy part isn't enough for someone's ear to really 
uh, understand what's going on. Not to say that it's like above their intelligence level or anything. I just mean like a melody, a good melody is a good melody and you can add as much shred around it as you want and it'll still hopefully remain a good melody. But w when you start with the idea of just having shred, so I'm going to make a riff that's shreddy and go, that's not always the best spot to start. Uh, or at least it's definitely for me, usually not the best place to end. Uh, but, uh, anyway, it's a cool, uh, cool example of a little thing uh, I'm going to work on today. I'm going to take everything they got. I'm going to go, uh, let's see, they're playing in E flat. So I'm just going to move it up. I'm just going to move it up. I'm only going to solo the lead channel. Um, I'm using Guitar Pro. <laughs> I'm going to mute the other channels. Oh, wow, it sounds really different when it's just by itself. That's interesting. Uh, all right, cool. So I'm going to take a look at the first shape. So it's like an intro kind of thing. Um, they, I think they just played this first arpeggio once. What I'm doing might look kind of weird if you're not too used to it. Um, when you're doing multi-finger tapping, I find that trying to line up your fingers uh, sort of like this, if you can kind of understand what the hell is going on here, rather than keeping them kind of spaced out like this, uh, this this would be good if you're doing multiple strings, but, but if you're trying to do something on one string, you actually have to like get the pull off just like you would here. still need to sort of get that uh, that downward kind of picking motion. Uh, it's a tough thing to kind of do. Kind of hurts your hand at first, but eventually get used to it. Okay. Okay, so uh, it feels pretty easy, but I feel like I'm going to have trouble going from that into the next thing, because this is not too difficult of a thing to memorize, but I feel like uh, it's the next one is different, uh, and so changing, changing uh, quickly between this and the next one might be kind of tough. Alright, so there, now he ties over the note. Oh my god, how do you do that, dude? Okay, so he ties over the seventh fret. So what I might do if I'm playing it slowly. Uh um oops, sorry. Yeah. So I, I might actually take the positions, I might actually switch positions. Am I missing one? That sounds cool. So I think I got it. Let's separate them a little bit. So I'm just going to work on bar 34. If you have the official tab, you can follow along. Okay, so, um, so what they're doing is sort of like an ascending and then descending back down past the starting point. OK, 
Okay, so that one is, uh, it's not too bad. Um, we can look at it like chord changes. Oops. It's a major seven. Yeah, so uh, seven, one, five, three, five, seven. No, three, five, one. And then when we go up higher, I guess it's also major seven. It sounds different. Yeah, something's different. One, seven, five, one, three. Major seven. Uh, okay, so that might not be the one. That's the one. So it's a one flat three five, and then descending inverted three. No, sorry, uh, not inverted three. Sorry, dear. Is it flat six? Um. Yeah, so this is so this is a D minor. So basically, a minor seven to major seven. Um, it all sounds pretty diatonic to me. So they're probably just part of the same key. Um, so yeah. Uh, lots of uh, left hand hammer-ons from nowhere, which is cool. Uh, or sorry, no. Uh, there's actually there's actually not. There's only a couple. There's really only. Um, it's it's mostly legato with your left hand, but you're generally starting with your right hand, uh, except for the ascending. Then when you go back on, then you're doing all the hammer-ons from nowhere. Um, now the hammer-ons from nowhere are a tough thing for people that haven't got into it. So hammer-ons from nowhere are they require a lot of left hand strength. Oops. So a lot of the time you actually have to even out your left hand by pushing a little bit less with your right hand tapping. So your left hand is inherently going to be like a little bit, I don't know, for me it's a little bit weaker when it comes to hammer-ons with certain fingers. Not all, but certain fingers. But my right hand is really strong. So you really have to even though so that you try to get that even velocity. Otherwise it might sound kind of strange. Um, let's see if I can do, I'm going to learn the bulk of the riff right now. I already have the intro. The intro seems like a little bit more difficult than the riff. Starts. That one's tough. So that's tough because you need to get you have to get your your pinky finger off the tenth fret of the G string in time, so you're not doing that move. You want to do this. The coordination of that takes a little bit of time. All right, cool. I like it. Uh, it's the same for two. Let's play it out. Oh man, that part sounds cool. Um, okay, so it really is just uh, the same for, I think it was eight or four or whatever the hell it was, but it changes the high note there. So let's see, where does it change?
Um, ooh, the sneaky sounding. On the tab, they don't do a slide, or they, they do a slide? Oh, I see, yeah, so they tap a slide. Um, a big thing that I've learned is trying to do vibrato with your right hand when you're tapping. This is a pretty like intricate kind of thing. You might think, okay, why would you want to do vibrato? But a lot of the time you get a tapped note and you want to add a little bit like, a little bit of feeling to that note. Um, and you might think, let's add some vibrato with our right hand because we're tapping the note with our right hand, right? Um, your left hand already knows how to do vibrato so well. So instead of doing this, where your right hand is like this dumb guy that's like, I'll try to do vibrato, I don't know. Um, if you're doing a left hand note, do vibrato with your left hand and sort of let your right hand just still hold the note, but you're doing the vibrato over on the other side of the note there. Uh, even when you're doing uh, no left hand work, let's say if you're just doing some weird tapping thing and you do hit a note at the end, you can still, after you hit this, hit that note, you can still grab that string with your left hand and, uh, and do some vibrato. Okay, so... Um, What sounds wrong with that? Or rather, something does sound wrong with that is what I meant. Is that it? Okay. Whew. It sounds like uh, old Steve Vai. Oh boy, I haven't practiced that for a while. watch Steve Vai videos non-stop and just go like, how do you do that? <laughs> Fuck, he's awesome. Uh, okay, so... So real slow. Is that it? Let me put it down to 50% speed, see if we can play along with this. What time signature are we even in, dude? Changes there. So you can see how I kind of just guessed what was coming up next, but luckily I was right. The right hand just stays the same. Okay, up, up next we got. Uh... I think that's the end. Look at that. <laughs> I like blow the easiest part. Oh, cool. All right. So I'm going to try and butcher my way through this. Feel free to stay with me on this. How do you think I'm doing? I think I'm doing okay. It's not the easiest thing that I've learned, for sure. It's definitely kind of weird. The thing about learning other people's stuff is generally when you get uh, 
you, you get a certain amount of time uh, under playing guitar, so you're like playing for 10 years or 20 years or whatever. You learn stuff and you practice stuff just like subconsciously or like you're not even thinking about it. So you just pra practice the stuff I just spat at the camera. Sorry about that. Um, not that I spat at you. I just spat at my camera. So sorry to myself because then I have to clean it. Um, when you're playing for 10 or 20 years or whatever, there's just certain things that you picked up on that you just pick up your guitar and you just play those things and you don't even think about it. And that's you like honing your style and that's how you get your certain voice on the instrument as you sort of practice the things that you just practice. I mean, like, you know, no one's going to... Uh, there's plenty of stuff that I can try, that, try to write that's outside of my kind of skill level or something that's different for me, and someone else can pick that up immediately because that's just something they practice. They just so happen to practice that, um, and I didn't. Uh, so that really is the specialization. No matter how much you uh, practice, there's just stuff that you're just going to be better at because you just have more time under that certain technique. So whether that's a certain permutation of left hand hammer-ons from nowhere to tapping or certain left hand fingering motion or whatever and you're just better at it it's like yeah you don't even you can't really control it honestly so uh so that's probably what's going on here there's some stuff in here where you can tell it's like oh let's write a tapping riff i've got this cool idea and it, it utilizes some things that i've just been practicing you know and that's just kind of you know how my style has been and and uh, and and you can tell i mean they're playing it at 178 quarter notes so it's not slow. I'm playing at 50% speed, and I'm like, uh, I'm kind of messing it up. All right. Let's see if I can fucking remember what the hell I learned. Transition's kind of strange. Can't even talk. I forgot this part already. Okay, so, uh, Oh, 
Okay. Um, I'm going to try one more time from the tippy top. Yes, that's right. I said the tippy top. Why did I say that? That's stupid. Um, yeah, there's one thing about trying to learn something like this is trying to get it off the tab as quickly as you can, trying to internalize it. Um, so looking for similarities between the parts, uh, trying to figure out maybe some of the music theory behind it, uh, thinking about the intervals, the distances between the notes, what uh, hand you start with um, for each thing. So say this one I lead with my left hand, this one I lead with my right hand, trying to memorize, trying to link a bunch of stuff together so that when you go to play it next time, you don't fuck it up. All right. <laughs> I'll see if I can see if I can do it. This is uh, I'm gonna try it a little faster actually, 60%. See if I can do it. Let's see. What's the harm? I can't do it. Okay. Derp. the tap slide with the right hand for that 13th fret. Okay, I think I got it. Well, not full speed yet, but you know what I'm saying. I think I got it mostly memorized. Sort of met messing it up a little bit. And like I said, uh, I think that they're doing that tap slide with that 13th fret, little 13th fret guy. <laughs> Seventy percent. Oh, sorry, that was seventy percent. Damn. All right. Aren't you proud of me? Let me know in the comments if you're proud of me. Please, I need I need the approval, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What am I missing there? I'm bl I was blowing that one. I was like getting too distracted. I was like thinking about other shit. Uh...
No, I'm playing alright. Alright, everybody. Do our best. Try it again. Let's fucking try it again. That's my Canadian accent. Let's fucking try it again. This sound weird when I'm playing this. There's no rhythmic dif difference. Uh, I'm talking about bar 51. Yeah, 51. They call it the fake chorus. I don't know why they call it the fake chorus. <laughs> that sounds right. Oh, no, it sounds right when I play it. All right, everybody ready for 90%? I'm like, I'm like doing okay. I wouldn't say I'm nailing it. It's not exactly easy, but. Ninety percent, it gets a little bit tough. Let me tell you. Let me be totally honest with you. Why does it sound different? Why am I am I blowing it? <laughs> I blew it there. I think the big thing is my left hand is not nailing those hammer notes nowhere. That's why. Let me know if you also have that same problem. Hundred percent speed. I'm, I'm fooling myself if I can do it. Wrong fret. I gotta get on like the right fret, I guess. There's my, like, kind of half-assed, shitty version of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's very, very cool. It's a very cool part. Um, my left hand kind of hurts right now. Uh, it's a good, uh, it's a good warm-up, that's for sure. Well, uh, let me know if you like that, uh, that part. I sure like it. I think it's neat. I think it's a neat little part. Um, what would be cool is if it was harmonized, uh, or is it harmonized? I think it's part, I think part of it's harmonized. Oh, the intro is harmonized. Yeah, the intro is harmonized, which is always cool. It's got, uh... Yeah, some other part to introduce it. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, what a great band. What a great riff. Um, let me know in the comments what you think I should work on next. And thank you for joining me on this episode of Dean Attempts to Learn. 
goodbye.